Welcome to Tech Brothers with Damir. In this video, we are going to learn how to create table per Excel file and load all the sheets data dynamically in SSIS package by using script task. So let's go ahead and take a look. Here I have two Excel files. Let's open the first file and I have ID, name and date of birth columns in sheet one. The same columns I have for sheet two. Data can be different. Uh, if you understand uh, from here, all the sheets uh, should have the same metadata or the columns uh, uh, that we are going to load. If uh, th th they have the different uh, columns, uh, then we, uh, we, need, we should be using different scenario. We should create a table for each sheet. I have done that video as well. But here, uh, as uh, we are going to create uh, a table per file, all the sheets uh, should have the same metadata or column information. So let's go ahead and take a second. Uh, uh, open a second uh, Excel file. Here we have ID, full name, and date of birth. So these columns are different uh, from our Excel file one. Here we have ID, full name, and uh, date of birth. So these uh, two sheets have the same column structure. Now let's close this one. In our case, it should create two tables. Uh, that is, if uh, your scenario is okay, you will always provide one file. You don't have to do anything. It will take one file and uh, create a table for you and load all the sheets. Uh, it, if tomorrow you have uh, three or hundred or thousand files, it is going to create a table for each of that. So don't worry about that. As long as uh, you maybe have only one sheet, that's, that's perfect. If you have more than one sheet, then make sure the sheets uh, will have the same uh, column structure. Now I'm going to go and show you the database where I'm going to load that uh, information. Here in the Tech Brothers, uh, under the tables, I do not have any table as of uh, now. Let's open SSDT SQL Server Data Tools and create a new SSIS package. And uh, rename this one, uh, create a, a table per file. And uh, now as we are going to read the files from the folder, I would recommend creating a variable because on each environment you can have uh, file sitting on different uh, folders. Uh, so by using the variable, you can create a configuration and then just uh, change the value for this variable in a configuration. Uh, so on each different environment like QA, uh, prod, UAT, you will be just uh, um, changing uh, the, the value for the variable by using configuration. Uh, so we call it folder path and it is going to be string. Second part, what we have to do, we have to create a connection manager uh, that we can use uh, in script as so I'm going to go ahead and create a new ADO connection. And here it is already created, but if you would like to create a new one, you have to click here, provide the server name and then provide the database name. It is a uh, Amir SQL 2016 and uh, let's see Tech Brothers IT test the connection looks good and hit OK. Now, as you see that it has Amir PC backslash SQL 2016 Tech Brother IT, that's not really a great name. I would recommend renaming this one to something like, uh, okay, DB underscore connection. So once uh, you change the configuration for this uh, uh, connection manager, you would know that, okay, this is Tech Brother IT database. Uh, so this really helps, the naming really helps when you're creating a configuration and you need to update some values in the table or XML file for that configuration. This is all good, now we need to bring the script task here and open a script task and uh, we will be using the folder path right here. Read only variables and uh, go ahead and find a folder path variable. We are all good here, click on edit script I can uh, write all that script what I have written. Uh, it will take me some time, but I don't want to take it. Uh, I will go to techbrothersit.com. Uh, Let me open this one. And uh, here, give me a second here. Uh, we will go to the, once you are on Tech Brothers IT, you will go to SSIS uh, video tutorial. I'm creating a lot of uh, scenarios with Excel. So here on the seventh, we have how to create table per Excel file and load all sheets data dynamically in SSIS. So click that one and we can copy the script from there. 
uh, the link for this script I'm going to put in the video as well so you don't have to worry first of all we need to add uh, some uh, namespaces uh, so we can use different methods and uh, different instances uh, uh, from those uh, na uh, namespaces uh, here in the editor go to the namespaces uh, tab and uh, just uh, hit enter and paste so we are using system.io as we are going to read the file information data data.oladb uh, because we are going to use excel and we need to make connection and here we are going to make uh, uh, use of this uh, namespace uh, for the uh, sql connection now we will come to the main function right here and paste our code i'm going to walk you through again opening the wrong uh, explorer here i will take this code all the way if you don't like copying code from here that's absolutely okay i have uh, uh, uploaded the code here link to the script uh, right in front of the scenario you can open it and copy from here as well go to the main uh, the same way we just went in the editor so you see here in the main i need to copy this code all the way to the success so till here so that's it once you copy this one and uh, take it and go to the editor and paste it right here this looks good I believe one uh, parenthesis was missing at the end so I just add one here before the success uh, I will try to adjust or uh, make changes in the blog as well so when you copy it should have a correct uh, number of parentheses here what we are doing uh, first of all as uh, we are declaring a variable folder path and then uh, I'm using uh, that uh, SSIS pa package variable uh, was to set the value of this uh, variable why because every time I need to use a folder path I do not want to type this whole uh, thing uh, so I can use uh, this part uh, everywhere but it will make a uh, code ugly uh, instead of that I just use a folder path variable and then set the value for it then uh, we have another variable called the directory and we are getting uh, the directory info and uh, here is our folder path so we are getting the directory info from uh, that folder path we have we know that uh, here is the uh, our folder path that's the that's the path we have saved in that variable so it is going to get all the directory names and information for our uh, current directories and files uh, right now we have only files here so uh, it will get uh, us all the information for the file by using uh, the file info um, class uh, here what we are doing uh, we will be uh, creating um, the list of those uh, or you can call it collection of those files we will get uh, all the files information and then we can loop through that collection or uh, uh, you can call it array whatever it is a, it is a complete information for all those files so that's where we are saving then what we are doing I'm declaring another variable full file full path and then I'm looping through so remember we the files has all the collection of file names and then we loop through each time it is going to loop through we are going to save that to the file and that we can use that here I'm saying a string file name blank and a file full path that should be consisting of a folder path backslash file name so on each of the iteration when it's gonna loop through this is the path uh, that it will build now file name I said uh, file name dot name dot replace uh, file name has dot xls x at the end so I don't wanna use that in my table name so what I did I just replace this one with the blank so this one I will use as a table name now uh, message box that show if you just want to show full path for that uh, uh, file uh, just uh, for the debugging or where you are when you run the uh, package first time fine and then we are creating a couple more variables here string uh, uh, connection string uh, hdr header and I'm saying header is yes uh, uh, this is a uh, connection string variable provide microsoft.ac.oladb12.0 that's the uh, provider I'm using here is full path so I have to provide the full path for the file and then also set some properties okay header is yes and imax is equal to uh, one so uh, I'm, I'm, I'm treating the all the columns as the string so that's what it means here I'm creating a new connection by using that connection string and uh, opening a connection to the Excel 
and uh, uh, creating a data table, a DT uh, sheet, and uh, from here I'm uh, uh, getting uh, OLED DB schema tables. So uh, this is the table I'm creating in a in a memory where uh, it will get all the schema information. So from there I can extract uh, all the sheet names. So here I declare a variable called sheet name. Sheet name is equal to blank, and then I'm uh, looping through. So I'm saying, okay, data row. Check each row in uh, this uh, data table and uh, for the rows. Uh, and uh, once uh, that's uh, uh, dr that table that to string contains, uh, if it contains the dollar sign, that means uh, uh, it is a sheet. Uh, what you do, sheet name is equal to dr sheet table name. So take this column value and save into the sheet name. So that's how we will get uh, the sheet name. Once we have sheet name, we can display it uh, just for debug and later on we can remove that part. And here we are saying load the data table with the sheet. So as I need uh, the columns so I can create my table, first of all, what I did with the OLEDB uh, command, I'm saying uh, I created this command select asterisk from uh, uh, this sheet. So once I will do that, uh, here I'm going to go ahead and say, okay, uh, new adapter, and here is our data table, and I'm filling that. Uh, data table. So this is going to fill all the information or a table with this information. Select asterisk from a sheet. Uh, so that means it is going to read everything on that Excel sheet. Here we will be doing, a, we will be creating a table. We say an if not exist, select asterisk from sys dot objects where object uh, ID is equal to this. And I'm using the DBO schema. Uh, sorry, I'm using the schema DBO in this case. Uh, if you want to use different schema for your, um, let, let's say staging or all that, you can uh, make a change here. And uh, see, remember I was I, I was telling you like file name without .xls. Uh, that's why I have created this part. Uh, I'm using as a table name and type in you know, user type and check that if uh, this table is. Uh, not there go ahead and create it if the table is there don't create it because see in the first uh, loop it is going to create the table and uh, for the second sheet when it's going to load the data we don't need that table it, it is there we should we will just come back and just load the data and here it, what we are doing we have a count of uh, columns and uh, once we have the columns and uh, here what we are doing we are going through that column list and concatenating them so we can build our column list and uh, th this is gonna have a complete uh, create table file name that's a, that will be like okay um, it, it, as we didn't define anything here it is going to create in a dbo schema by default and file name will be as a table name and this will be list of the columns and we are telling them okay create this n worker uh, max so you can make it to n worker 4000 or whatever in your case depending upon the data length uh, you are going to load Th this part uh, we are using the connection uh, manager from our uh, uh, SSIS package and here remember we have a created radio.net connection and uh, right now it is a DB connection that not right we have created DB connection underscore um, tech brothers I'm doing this by purpose I could have just simply leave a DB connection there and I don't have to make any change but as uh, your databases will be different, so this is what you are going to do. Whatever the connection manager name you use, uh, this is what you need to provide uh, here. Once uh, it is there, if you want to show the uh, DDL definition for create table, you can show it. And uh, finally, we are preparing our command and saying, okay, use a table DDL command. That's uh, the create table definition. Use my connection and run the query. So it is going to create a table. Now you can. Uh, um, leave this message box here so table is created we can see that and then finally what we're doing here we are using bulk copy SQL bulk copy to load that data uh, from uh, the data set uh, oh, sorry data table uh, to the SQL server table now here we have said uh, use this uh, def, uh, destination table is equal to the file name so it is going to use the DBO uh, and then uh, ta table name whatever the file name is and then write the data to it. That's it.
So just to summarize, it is going to read the file names first. So it will once it read the first file name, then it's going to go and uh, uh, take this part and then read the sheet first. So let's say if it is a, there is only one file, uh, it, this is coming here. Then uh, for it is this part is the the dr data road dr sheet. Depending upon this information, it is going to repeat the, that, this part. So let's say if we have multiple sheets, this part is going to repeat multiple times. And the, the outer uh, for each for, is for looping through the file names. That's uh, save it, close it, go ahead and run your package. So this is given us uh, the file name. So you see that the complete path of this file. Yes, fine. Okay, reading the sheet one, fine. Now this is uh, where it is in. A, okay, if not exist, uh, select asterisk from this uh, table definition and all that. So we can copy if you would like. Uh, just press on here and say Control C, come back and uh, paste it here. Now this is uh, the query it is generating. Uh, so it is checking if the table is not there. Go ahead and uh, create the table. So if you check right now, you can run it, but you, we don't want to create the table here. Table is not there. We would like a SSIS package to take uh, care of that part. Hit OK. Now it is in table is created. Let's uh, take a look on the table. So you see the table is created. We can select the data from this table right now, and it is loaded the first uh, sheet. Now. It is loading the second sheet. Okay, it is going to check the table again if the table does exist or not. Uh, as the table does exist, it's not going to drop the table. So it's not going to create the table as well. So it is going to use the table. It is saying table is created. That's a, just a message box. We will just disable. It's not creating any table. Uh, okay, now it is coming to the second file. We can go and take a look on this uh, uh, table. It should have two records now. See the first one came from sheet two, one, the second one came from sheet two. Now it is it should create the other table. Okay, just keep going. And uh, that's it, it finished successfully. You can save it, sorry, stop it and save the package. And let's go ahead and take a look if new table is created. So this is a new table, it is created and we can preview the data and here see the IDs are different we have thousand and thousand one this is coming from sheet two and this is coming from sheet three and that that's one thing you don't have to worry like sheet names should be same or sheet one or two or three it is looping through the sheets automatically so you don't worry about that part uh, also uh, here if we go to the table we can see that ID full name date of birth and the, for the other we have ID name and DOB uh, it is taking care of uh, everything. That's great. Uh, that's pretty much it, I will say. Uh, but in uh, your scenarios, I hope uh, this will help. Uh, and there, there are other videos I'm creating pretty much on every uh, Excel scenario we feel uh, uh, trouble with uh, as an ETL developer, uh, such as uh, create a uh, tab uh, table for each sheet and load the data data. Uh, okay, how to uh, re skip a few rows. Uh, from the Excel sheet and load the rest of the data. So I will suggest going through all those details and you will learn a lot of good things from here. Thanks very much for your time and I will see you guys in the next video.